So this is new. I think I tried this about six years ago to start a YouTube channel. And I think I put out like four videos, but they were all just kind of all over the place vlogs and I didn't really sustain that. So they all got deleted and this is a brand new channel. So hello, my name's Anna. I really love crafting, hence my name, Crafty Anna. I have always loved crafting, whether it was knitting, painting, sewing, cross stitching. I love all of it. I am not good at any of it by any means, but I do know that one of the best things about life is being a lifelong learner and always learning new things and new skills. That's what I used to teach my students when I was a teacher is that no matter what, there's always something to learn and you can always find something that you're passionate about and have fun learning and practicing. So the whole point of my channel is to learn new things, just try new crafts, try new skills, and share the process with you, and hopefully you'll get some inspiration to try some new things yourself. So for my first video today, I thought I would do something a little simple, simple I say, because I was originally planning on following a pattern, like a sewing pattern, like probably this one or this one. They're both lovely vintage patterns and they are dresses that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Oops, stay back. I didn't sit you down, stay down. <coughs> okay, so my craft room, you can see a tiny bit of it behind me. It's pretty bare, pretty boring. I'm working on getting some things finished to hang up on the walls, but that's another matter. One thing that I do wanna do is fix my curtains. So my husband and I bought this house in November and we didn't move in until January, January, because we were doing some renovations before we moved in and we were still living in our apartment at that time. So it was fine. And when we moved in, the seller had these very, very, actually I can just show you these very, very cheap curtains on all the windows. I kind of hate them. They're kind of horrible. Like, look at this, look like it's very plasticky feeling um it doesn't feel nice like netting or tool it just feels gross and they were kind of cheaply done like there's threads all over them i don't know where she got them or if she made them i hope she didn't because then i'll feel really bad saying this but they they're not my favorite and of course she had them up in the house just to you know show the house and to stage everything but i have not gotten around to actually redoing them. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some fabric that I bought from Joann's that I was originally going to turn into a dress, but after pre-washing it, it turned out way too fluffy and soft to be a dress. And I could have made it into winter dress, but the colors, I'll show you. The colors are this, are, are this, the colors are very, very springy summery and the fabric is super duper soft now which would be nice for winter. And if I have some left over after my curtains, I might make a little cape or something and then just look like a little porcelain doll in the winter, which wouldn't entirely be a bad thing. So I'm going to make some curtains out of these. They're pretty heavy. They're gonna be pretty heavy soft curtains, but I'm okay with that because these colors are fantastic. I love these colors. I love the pink and the gray together. Our house actually, the color scheme in our house is gray and blue. So I think the gray and the pink in the sewing room will kind of tie to the rest of the house a little bit and then I can get rid of this, which I kind of hate. And I have not even like tied them like properly, like here, I'll show you. This is what I've been using to tie my curtains back with. It is literally like the hem that I cut off of, I think a bed sheet that I bought from Goodwill because I wanted to use the, the fabric for something what that something is, I don't remember. But I've just been using this hem that I cut off of something to tie my curtains back so the cats wouldn't like claw up them because that's what they do. Um, so I'm also gonna make some nice little ties for the curtains so I don't use this. Okay, so my plan is to just go ahead and get these started. I have never made curtains before, but I don't think it should be that hard. I think it's just rectangles. You make a loop at the top, that you can loop over the bar, the bar, the curtain rod, and then it should just gather down when you shove them together and tie them off. So I'm hoping if I just lay on my fabric, cut out some nice rectangles that are long enough and hopefully remember to cut them on the straight grain so they don't 
stretch over time, that would be super duper. So I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my sewing table and go ahead and lay this fabric out. And I will be right back with you to show you my plans. Okay, table is all clean now. I just need to get my fabric, lay it out, and then start measuring things to make some curtains because here, I guess I, guess I can show you now. This is what they look like currently. Not the cutest curtains in the world. Not even in colors that I quite like. Not that I don't like green because you know, the tree outside is lovely, but I think pink and gray will look very, very cute up here. Oh, also, in the time-lapse, you were propped up over there on my little sewing machine. Okay, so I hopped up on my chair and used my tape measure to kind of measure how wide and how long I want these. So my thought is to have each half be one piece, obviously, going from kind of the center out. So from the middle out to where I want them when they're fully closed in is gonna be about 40 inches. So I wrote that down. And then from the rod down to the bottom of the window, which is where I want these to stop, it's 65 inches. So what I've done, I'm not an artist at all, but this is the window. This is the window. This is the table. Obviously I labeled it table. So I wrote down my measurements up here when I first measured so I wouldn't forget. And then I thought about, oh, Obviously, I need, need to make sure to add in half inch seam allowances. And then I was like, there's really not many seams, mainly just hems. So I just need to make sure I include a little bit of extra half inch seam allowance for my hems because on the sides, this fabric is really fluffy on the selvages and on the ends, it frays really bad. So um, my plan is to take it and just do a double fold in hem and then stitch it down by hand. So it'll look really cute. Or I can do some binding, but I think. I might just do the hem, but it depends on how cute binding would look and how much material I have left. So I also need to make sure to add four inches to the length, to the 60 inch length for the loop thing. I know that's specific, but if you look at this like, oh, look at this hideous green one, how it's kind of like looped over the top of the bar and stitched down to make a loop. That's kind of what I want to do. I was thinking about doing the roughly one, but I kind of don't want to. I think with this fabric, it's too thick to make those ruffles look nice and to gather down as much as I wanted to. So this is the plan. So I need two pieces that are about, wait, did I write 60 here? I did, that's 65. But actually adding the four inches for the loop thing, it's gonna be, oh no. I taught seventh graders. I avoid that number whenever I can. Okay, magical discovery. I just measured the width of my fabric to make sure it's at least 40 inches wide because I was worried that it was gonna be, you know, one of those 33 or 36 inch wide pieces, but it's actually 41 inches, which is exactly what I needed because I needed half inch seam allowance on both sides. So, yay. So that means I just need to cut out two 60, nope, two 70 inch lengths of what I have here, and then I can start making the loops and hand stitching the hems. So that's actually not too bad. So I guess I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so pieces are all cut out now. I say pieces all cut out. There's two rectangles cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and get those on my table and stitch up with the loops because I think that's the next part that I really need to focus on is getting the loop part done because that's like the only sewing part there is to this other than the hand sewing for folding in and stitching down the hems on the sides and the bottom. I guess the top two after I make the loops I'll turn it in and whip stitch that down or slip stitch it down that might look a little prettier. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my sewing machine set up. I need to pick a thread color. I'm thinking white. I think white would be nice and so I'm gonna make a bobbin if I don't have one, but I'm fairly certain I do. 
and then I'll go ahead and get started on that. Also, you can see my mirror. Hello, me in the mirror, and you as well. Okay, just pinning up one side took me way longer than it should have. My back hurts from leaning over my table, but that's just me whining. So it was pinned. I was gonna pin, like I said, like all four of the sides in one go, but I want to sit down and just start stitching at this. So I think what I'm gonna do is settle into my little comfy chair, turn on my TV, start watching something while I stitch away at this hem. I'm just gonna do a whip stitch, nothing too exciting, and then reserve some of these pins so I can pin up the other ones. Cause I, I have a substantial box of pins, but I mean, after a while they will run out if I try to use way too many. So I think I'll do up this edge, reserve my pins back in my box and repeat over and over again until I'm done hemming the sides. Then I'll do the loops at the top. Then I'll do the bottom hems. Cause my, my new plan, I'm kind of thinking about is doing the bottom hems with some kind of trim so I can do a bias kind of binding at the bottom of a little trim set onto it. So that's the idea right now. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna go settle in and do some hand stitching. Guys, the decoy fabric worked. Hello little cutie. Hi, yes. That's your fabric. That's your fabric. That's the one you like. No, 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 no. Okay. Go back to your decoy fabric. Please. Every time you lay on this one is the exact moment I need to move it to move on the seam. Hey. Decoy fabric. Good girl. Good girl. Guys, it works. The decoy fabric works. She's loafing on it. Then there's um this queen perched on the banister in the hallway, ignoring me. But this cutie's with me on the decoy fabric. Okay, so it's been a bit. Um, that took me all afternoon to do by hand. Okay, when I say all afternoon, uh, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. I had to take a couple of hours out to do some tutoring. I had a couple of tutoring sessions today that were scheduled. So of course I had to be there for those and it's a little hard to hand sew while doing that. So I got all four of the side bits done and hemmed down and I can show you what they look like. Okay, so here's an example of one of the um, little side, oh, I guess I don't need, need my thimble, side seam hems. I just double rolled it and whip stitched it all the way down. So on this side, you can't see it because I was gonna just do this with top stitching and I thought it looked kind of cute, but I decided, you know what? I was in the mood to hand sew. So I hand sewed the sides on both sides of both curtains. So now I need to mark the loopy bit at the top, fold it over, double roll it, and then hem that down as well. So I'm gonna go do that. Do I have a visitor? I do. Hello. Would you like to come in? You know how to open the door. Good girl. Oh, no, you're gone? Okay, bye. Hi. So it's now the next day because last night I got the loopy bits sewn by machine and at that point it was like 10 30 and it was time for bed so what i'm doing today is i'm finishing these up shouldn't take it too terribly long i just need to here i'll show you i need to take these edges that i sewed down and take the little bit here the raw edge and tuck it under and whip stitch it down so it looks a little nicer and then i need to do the hem which it's folded under you can't see it 
but I need to do the hem. And I can't decide if I want to add ruffles or lace or something cute to this at the bottom to make them look a little frillier or just leave them plain and do a very simple hem. Haven't decided yet. So I will be working on getting this hemmed down on this one and this one while I watch some TV and then I will get back to you. Also, tis a lovely, beautiful day outside. I know all you can see is a tree, but it's a very pretty tree, isn't it? Okay, so I got the top part loopy bits um, sewed and hemmed. So that's done. So the last thing is the actual like bottom hem of these curtains, which I'm trying to decide what to do because I have this um, lace that someone gifted me a, a while ago and I don't know what else to use it for because it says right here, not for apparel use and it's really scratchy. It's not a very soft lace that I'd want to put on a dress or anything. So I figured it'd be a nice trim at the bottom of these curtains, but I could also use it as a binding to like bind this edge to just encase the rodges, but then you'd still kind of see it. So I don't think I'm gonna go with that. So I think I'm going to do the hem by hand like I've been doing for the sides and the top and then stitch this on as a trim. Possibly, I don't know, because I don't know how I like how it looks, but it, I think it'd look better with this trim than by itself. Another idea I had is this lace I had, which has like this little like open box thing in the middle that you can see, and I had this ribbon that I've been kind of testing around and threading it through to see if I liked it. The issue is this ribbon is blue. And remember when I said that these curtains were gonna be pink and gray? Well, now that I look at it, and especially on camera, it what I thought was gray is definitely green. So I don't think the blue ribbon's gonna look nice, but all the other ribbons that I've been testing out are too wide to fit in this little lace. So I'm kind of stuck, not really sure what I'm gonna do about the trim. So I think what my current goal is I'm going to settle in again in my chair and do these hems either by hand or by machine. I haven't decided yet because if I do it by machine, then I could use this trim to cover up the top stitching, which I might do just because there's been so much handwork on these curtains and my hands hurt. But then I have to decide if I'm going to use this or not because it's pretty and with this blue ribbon tied through, it might look very pretty on some other project other than this one. So I think my current plan, now that I'm talking out loud, thinking out loud, I might do this hem by machine and then use this trim and slip stitch this down to cover up the top stitching and call that good. Because I think a plain little lace trim on these would look cute at the very bottom just to add a little bit of texture and interest to them. So that's the plan. Um, still a lovely day outside. This is my little work area. A tad messy, but this is where I sit when I'm doing hand sewing. I have my little happy light over there, which I don't really know if it works, but it's still nice to have some good light. And then over here, I, I have a pause right now, but I've been watching this Angela Clayton video for probably the 80th time. No joke. I love her videos. All right, time to do this hem and stitch on some lace. And then after that, they should be done. They are done! I finished them. They look pretty plain and simple from here, but I know at least in my heart how much work went into these. So what I ended up doing for the hem, my final design choice, I didn't even call it a design choice, was to use um, bias binding that I just had from Joann's. I have way too much of it, so I wanted to use it to get the hem done. And then I took some of that lace that I could thread ribbon through, like I showed you, and I used my yellow ribbon, even though when I threaded it through, it ended up being folded in half. And then I just top stitched it down through the ribbon, which doesn't look the prettiest up close, obviously, but at least from far away, you can't even tell. And honestly, you can't even tell that the lace is really there when you're far away, but I still think it adds a nice little element of cute at the bottom, a little area of interest. And the sides are nicely done, at least by hand. And I got them on my curtain rod. It took standing on a chair, but that's okay. They're done. So now I'm going to make some ties out of some extra fabric. And my goal is to take it and just kind of like pull it from the side like that. So if I can get it and tie it off here 
so then it still loops over and I can't hold it and back up at the same time but I think you kind of get what I'm saying. I'm gonna make some ties, tie it off, and then I'll show you how it looks at the very end. They are done! Look at those cuties. All right so for the ties, I'm gonna be honest, I got pretty lazy while making these. Um, <laughs> They're just strips of the fabric that I um, cut from my remaining fabric and, you know, folded them into a rectangle, stitched them with the right sides together, turned them outward, slip stitched the end that was open, and then just tied them into a little bow to hold the curtains back. But I think they look cute. They're definitely better than those monstrosities. <laughs> So I think they're absolutely precious. On camera, you can't really see the pattern too well. It looks a little strange, but in person it looks cute. And I'm sure like um, when the light isn't shining directly through them and when it's dark in here and it's just the light from this side, they will look very, very cute and you'll see the design. I actually don't hate the fact that it's pink and green now that I look at it because I've been um, wanting to... Hold on. I'm actually not that mad about the colors. I, again, like I said, I thought that it was pink and gray and it's pink and green, which actually is not that bad. Um, it will go with the look that I'm going for in this craft room, which eventually is gonna be Animal Crossing themed. So having a lot of green in here will actually work with that. So that is my video about making my own curtains. It took me two days, which is a lot longer than it should have, but it is what it is. So next, I think I'm going to actually do a dress pattern, one of my vintage ones. On my Instagram, I might go put a poll in my story to see which pattern I should follow next. So we'll have to see, but that might wait until tomorrow because I think what I'm going to do today is clean up the mess that I've made in here. Um, I have another tutoring session this afternoon, so I need to make sure I'm available for that. And then I might start something else, uh, just more of a personal project, not something that I'll record, but of course will end up being on Instagram. So thanks for watching my video about my curtains. I hope you liked it. And I hope you liked my first video. It's probably all over the place. Um, and my camera's probably been very wobbly, but to be fair, I am holding up my phone and my arms are weak. <laughs> so holding this thing up to talk to the camera is a little tricky, but I did it. I hope you liked it. If you want to see more videos from me and hopefully see me improve at making videos, please subscribe if you want to. If not, I get it. Go watch somebody else's sewing videos. There are a million amazing people out there on YouTube that do some amazing sewing videos. So go check them out too. Um, as you can see, kind of a fan of this one. She's just great. Okay, well, I will see y'all in the next one. So... Uh, bye? I don't know how to end this. Bye!